Now to more of our exclusive interview with Scott Peterson, the armed resource officer on duty during the Parkland school shooting. On Tuesday, he shared his moment-by-moment -moment account of what happened that day. Well, today we pick up the story when he found out he was being forced to resign and later would be accused of being a coward. It was surreal. It was like I, I didn't know what was going on. It was a shock to me. They never said, hey, explain your actions here. We have a few questions. No, nothing. Because I know I didn't violate any policy or procedure. I've been with the agency 32 years. I know the policies. I know the procedures. I communicated right on that scene. I did everything that I, I felt at the time was appropriate. You cannot violate policy and procedures and still not get it right. Right. You're absolutely right. Is that what happened here? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, like I said, Savannah, this will haunt me the rest of my life. It will. Those are my kids, you know, those were my kids. So, and that's why it hurts the way it does. Eight days after the Parkland shooting, it would be Scott Peterson's last day as a police officer, but he didn't know why until this. And he never went in. The captain was driving me home and my phone started, you know, going off saying that, you know, Sheriff Israel is basically, you know, ripping you apart. You know, people started to text me. What matters is that when we in law enforcement arrive at an active shooter, we go in and address the target. And that's what should have been done. He said you did nothing when you clearly knew there was a shooter inside. He said you clearly knew based on what he had seen. It's not true. It's untrue. Joe DeRuzzo is Scott Peterson's attorney. I don't think a, a crime scene that's that big, with that many witnesses, with that many people injured, that you could have completed a full investigation within eight days. I don't think it's possible. He waited and he didn't want to go into the school. President Trump weighed in. Did you hear what he said? Part of it, part of it. And you know, President Trump, the only thing I, could, the only thing I can think is he went on the, the false narrative of Sheriff Scott Israel. But you know what, we are living in a free country. I mean, you know, it just hurts, you know. That's the commander in chief. That's the, you know, that's the president. It's tough. You know, I have two kids in the military. It's tough. You know, my boys. This man standing outside of the school the other day doesn't love the children. The president said he thought a school resource officer doesn't love the kids. That's what he said. He doesn't know. He wasn't there. You know, it's, it's easy to make comments and say things. You know, in Washington, D.C., you weren't there. You didn't know what I believed and what I assessed and what I heard those, those first few minutes on that scene. I think it was just easy for them to make me, you know, the punching bag. This is one of the that's... worst things that's ever happened, one of the worst school shootings. And you're getting blamed for not stopping it. If I knew everything, I would have been in there and engaging that, that shooter. And you know what? May, hopefully I would have shot him. He might have shot me. I don't know the what ifs, but it just, it, it's been hard. I mean, but it, you know, it's nothing compared to what these families went through. They lost their kids, you know, and kids were killed and injured. They lost them. You know, I'm alive. I mean, going through what I went through, it's horrifying because as a police officer, if you're a coward, that's the worst label you could have as a police officer. And it's just, it's not true. Since the shooting, Peterson says he's been leaning on his faith and his family, a fiance and four grown children. What have your kids said to you? You know, they're all adults, but they support me. You know, you know I mean, I told them everything what happened, you know, and they support me. You, when we first started talking, you said, you know, in a way you wish you had ha could have the opportunity to talk to the, to the families. Mm -hmm. In a way, I guess this is sort of that opportunity. It is. It well, is. What would you want to say to them? I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I didn't. I'm sorry that I didn't know where he was. Or it was one person. I didn't know who it was or where they were initially. And it's tough. It's tough. And knowing what I know now, it makes it even tougher. Because I know about active shooters. It's not like I have no knowledge, like, what, what can happen. It's just I didn't believe when I first got there that that's what was going on. And like I said, it's going to haunt me the rest of my life.
What, what's he going to do now? What's the rest of his, his life going to look like? Well, you know, I, I think he's not sure. He still lives in the area, but he told me, you know, it's, it's hard to be there because he goes out to dinner or something and wonders if people are looking at him sure. and saying that's him. He will collect his pension, um, which got a lot of headlines, but um, it, it went through the process and the, the sheriff's office had no reason to deny him his pension. He was a police officer for 31 years in good standing. And so I think he's going to try to put the pieces together Together, but as he said to me repeatedly, it's something that he will carry with him for the rest of his life. And I should mention he also faces a wrongful death lawsuit over his role in the events that day from one of the parents. And, um, you know, the parents, I've seen a few of their comments on yeah. Twitter. This is painful for them to hear him. And um, I think a lot of people are having differing reactions to it. Fascinating conversation, though. Thank you. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.